So you probably clicked on this video because, like me in the past, you're giving up at things too early. Now, I feel like I've cracked the code to this, and I'm about to share with you today the methods that I've used to help me overcome this and help me stick at things and become successful. We're first going to introduce the notion of game playing. So we're going to see whether we're playing finite games or infinite games. We're then going to transition that into the ideas of mediocristan versus extremistan. Then at the end, I'm going to tie that all together into a really simple, easy to understand visual representation of how you're going to stick out with things and the methods that are going to help you do that. If you're confused by anything I've said so far, then don't worry because I'm going to explain everything that you need to know in this video. So let's start off with the idea of playing games. So everything, everything we do in life, we can think of as playing a game. And this concept I'm about to share with you, I literally saw the other day on a podcast with Alex Hormozzi and Chris Williamson, which I'll leave a link for in the description. And he talked about playing infinite games rather than finite games. So this notion of infinite versus finite games is something that can really help us when we're trying to level up and stay consistent with things instead of giving up. What we need to do whenever we're participating in an activity or trying to get better at something is decide whether what we're participating in is a finite game or an infinite game because everything can be split up into either one. I'm going to explain that to you now. So let's have a look at that. We've got finite games and we have infinite games. So with a finite game, the key characteristics is we have known players, known rules, and an objective to win. So something like that could be soccer or football. Each team has a set amount of players, each team has a set amount of rules, we know the rules, and the objective is to, is to win in a certain time frame. Whereas with an infinite game, we can have changeable rules, so the rules of the game can change as the game's going. We can have known and unknown players, and the objective of the game isn't to win, it's to keep the game going. So let me give you some examples of these to make things more simple. So obviously I've given an example already of the finite game, which we could be any kind of sport. So in there we have baseball, we could have darts, we could have something even more strategic like chess. So these are all examples of finite games. We've got known players, known rules, and an objective to win in a certain time frame. Whereas what we're interested in is the infinite games. So as I said at the start, we're going to talk about getting in shape and, and health and fitness and building a business and having an income. So these are both examples of infinite games. So let's first look at fitness. So the reason you could be giving up at fit your fitness goals too early is because you're treating an infinite game like a finite game. You're trying to win at a game that you can't win at, a game that is infinite. So it's very important that when we're playing these games that we understand whether we're playing a finite game or an infinite game. And when we're playing an infinite game, it's important that we know the objective of the game is to stay playing the game. So if we take an example of fitness, business, or increasing your income, we've got to understand that these are all infinite games. So if you ever look at someone and admire their physique or admire the shape that they're in, you don't admire them because they've won fitness, you admire them because they've stayed in the game consistently enough to then have good results from that game. That person that you admire has understood they're playing an infinite game, so they, all they have to do is stay in that game to win it. It's the same with starting your business or increasing your income or starting a YouTube channel like I do. You can't win at that, you can't win at business. If we take an example of a really good investor like Warren Buffett, someone I really look up to, he's got so good at investing, not because he's trying to be the best and win at investing, because he knows that he has to stay in long enough for those results to compound up. And that's gonna take us on right onto our next point, which is mediocristan versus extremistan. And those of you who have read this book, The Black Swan, will kind of understand what I'm talking about here. So let me explain it to you. As humans, we can kind of think about living in two kinds of worlds. And Taylor, in the book Black Swan, he talks about mediocristan and extremistan. So let's explain mediocristan first. So a really good way to sum up mediocristan is when the sample is so large that no individual instance can make a difference to the whole sample size. So let's say we got a million humans together all in one go. This is gonna represent a million humans. Now within that sample size of a million humans, we collect the heights of each human. And on average, let's say we've got men in our sample size, the average is probably going to be about 5'10", something like that. So we have an average height of about 5'10". Now, in the idea of a mediocristan world, we could say that one outlier, one person who's really tall, isn't going to change that average very much at all. So even if we found someone who was 8 foot, they're not going to really change out of the sample size of a million. 
the difference in height on on average. But now let us think about an extremistan society, and we can link it back to our game playing. We can call it an extremistan game. Something that's obviously very extremistan is wealth. If we took a sample size of even a thousand average people, let's say each person's average wealth, with their house and their cars included, was five hundred thousand. So altogether, the wealth in that system is going to be 500 million. Now, what if we included in that system an outlier, someone like Jeff Bezos? So last time I checked, Jeff Bezos' wealth was around 100 billion, let's say. So that's gonna be 100 with a lot of zeros on the end. So by all of a sudden, just adding one person, our total wealth is going up to 100 billion, 500 million. So that just shows when we're playing this extremistan kind of game that one difference in the whole system, one difference in that sample size, one big outlier can change the sample size as a whole. So you might be thinking where I'm going with all this because it might sound a bit confusing so far. So let's look at this simple graph that I'm going to show you to wrap everything up. So with this graph, I'm going to use two axes. So we're going to have the axes of effort and the axis of outcome. Now we're going to use the ideas we've already said in the video, the finite versus infinite games and the mediocristan versus extremistan, we're going to use them within this graph to perfectly explain to you why you give other things too early. A lot of people think that we live in a society that is like this, linear, and this would link to the idea of mediocristan. They think that for the effort they put in, they get out the same amount of outcome. Now that can be true in some instances, but in most instances, we don't live in a mediocristan environment, we live in an extremistan environment, and that's something we've got to be very careful to differentiate. So if you looked at this graph now and you thought, okay, what's an extremistan environment gonna look like? You might be able to visualize a kind of exponential curve. And it might look something like this. So that's gonna go all the way up and keep going up exponentially. So we can see that when we get to the tail ends, the further ends of the effort spectrum, the outcome axis goes up exponentially. So we can define these two lines as linear versus exponential. And the first key point we're gonna make on this graph is that we need to understand when we're playing an exponential game versus when we're playing a linear game. And most of the time, as we talked about with fitness or raising your income or starting a business, we're playing a game that's exponential. And that's gonna come in really key in this next point which is to define this. This is what I'm gonna call the struggle zone. Now you click on this video because you give up on things too early and you want to know why. And this is exactly why. You are giving up when you're in this struggle zone. What you're doing is expecting your results to be linear. So you're expecting to be on this spectrum here, whereas your results at the start and after are exponential. So it's not until you reach this crossover point right here, the point of inflection, that, you're, that you start to see results for your effort. So here's the key takeaway from today's video. We're going to wrap up the infinite finite games, and the mediocristan and extremistan in this graph. So what we have to understand is that when we're playing these infinite games, we have to have our overall objective of staying in the game as long as possible. This way, we're not gonna give up when, when we're in this struggle zone we're gonna keep pushing past, keep putting in this effort as much as we can. And then eventually we're gonna reach this point of inflection where the exponential effects start to take effect and go above the linear effect. So all you have to do is know that you're playing an infinite game, have the objective of that game of success as to staying in the game as long as possible. And eventually you'll reach this point of inflection. You'll go past the struggle zone You'll know that your progress is going to be exponential after this point of inflection and then you will not give up. If this video was a help to you, make sure you give it a like, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time.